Hey guys, a few weeks ago I took a trip out to a reservoir, a little lake nearby called New Hogan Lake. At that reservoir, I was investigating what kind of landscape do I have? What kind of soil do I have? What kind of life do I have? And this is what I found. The lake is kind of a rocky lake. It doesn't have any plants near the water. It's got a lot of uh, gravelly stuff where the rocks have broken down a little bit. A little bit of mud down at the basin of the lake, but for the most part it's a very rocky beach. Now over time, weathering and erosion is going to break this into smaller and smaller particles and you'll end up with some sand or some gravel. And then if you're lucky, some of the organic matter, the decaying living matter from trees and grasses and things like that will blow in and add Add to the nutrients of this area and maybe some decomposers will come in and break down some more of those particles in order to have a soil something that is rich kind of like the compost that I have in my yard decomposers like earthworms things break down to form nutrients that allow other living things to th thrive and survive something that is able to provide nutrients for other living things that's what you want in an ecosystem so we're looking at this ecosystem now, and I want you to evaluate what is living here. So I took a little, so I took a little sample of water from that lake, and it is a photosynthesizer. It is a producer. That means it produces its own food. So here we have a sample of water I brought back from the lake. This has the big green thing in there. That is Eurasian water milfoil, and it is a water plant. This water plant, it will soak up carbon dioxide from the water, it will soak up water from the water, and it soaks up sunlight from the sun, of course. And it puts all these together to form glucose, which is its food. It's a nutrient that it uses to get its energy, and it also is something that it uses to break down and build the things that it needs to build, like new parts of its plant. Eurasian water milfoil is actually a pretty invasive species. You don't want it spreading around, and once it gets into a reservoir, it's hard to get rid of. Another thing I found was diatoms. Take a look at these diatoms. These diatoms are little single-celled organisms. They have what's called a chloroplast, something that the plant also has, and that's what gives it the power to photosynthesize. It is not a plant, but it can make its own food. So it is able to make its own food and it's swimming around in the water, producing oxygen and creating its own glucose. The round one here is in the process of splitting. I found this fascinating, putting it under the microscope and I can actually catch it in the process of taking one cell and dividing into two cells. It's happening all the time. All of these cells are always dividing and in the process of turning into new cells. So you have cells in your body that are doing the same thing and single-celled organisms multiply this way. This rod one is also a type of algae. There was a snail that was crawling around. Actually, a couple of snails. I didn't notice them when I first picked up the sample, but they must have been tiny, 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 or maybe just tiny eggs at the time that I picked them up. Maybe something attached to the Eurasian water milfoil. And then there was a shrimp-like creature. But what I want you to focus on today is the bubbles. So right now I've got this out in the sunlight, and it is happy, happy, happy. And if you look closely, you will see lots of bubbles rising from it. Literally, you can the bubbles are traveling so quickly, you don't have to wait very long for them to, to show up. Bubble, 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 and you can literally count them and get a rate of oxygen production. How bubbles per minute are you producing? And getting an idea of how big that bubble is, you could measure how much oxygen this plant is producing over a period of time. I want you to see all these bubbles on the end of this plant leaves. And those are all bubbles of oxygen that are squeezing out of the ends. And at some point they're all combine and bubble up. But little by little it's squeezing out all these bubbles. That rate of production is going to change depending on how much sunlight there is. When I had this inside the house a little while ago, it was sleepy, sleepy plant and it wasn't producing a lot of oxygen. But now it's out here, it's happy, it's moving around. So I want you to come up with some testable questions for this ecosystem. What could we change to see what difference it would make? We'll split this into one or two or three containers. We're going to have one container that is our control. Our control in an experiment is the container that we don't make any changes to. It'll have the same kind of water. It'll have the same plant, it'll have the same amount of sunlight that it's been getting all along, and we won't change anything. The reason that we do that is so that we don't suddenly realize, okay, oh, it changed for everybody. 
if there's any changes, we know it's the thing that we changed. That takes us to our next jar. We're going to pick another jar, and in that jar, we'll put some of this sample, and we'll change something. That's going to be what we call our independent variable. Our independent variable is the thing that the experimenter changes. Maybe we change the amount of sunlight it gets during the course of a day. Maybe we change the type of water it has. Maybe we change uh, the color of light that it gets during the course of a day. Maybe we change... Hmm. Think of some things. I'd like you to think of ideas of what we could do to experiment with the process of bubble production, all right? And then maybe we could do a third container with something else that's changed. But for each container, if it, you're doing an experiment, you only change one thing. It's called the independent variable. The reason you only change one thing, because if I changed both the color of light and the time of light, of how much light in the day you get, and change it from white light to green light, then you would not know, did it increase its bubble production because of the amount of light or because of the color of light? These are the things we want to know. When we're doing an experiment, we're doing an investigation, we want to know the answer to something. We get to know the answer by changing only one variable at a time. Then finally, you have the dependent variable. This is the thing that you're measuring. Now, for this experiment, I want to measure the rate of oxygen production. So I want to see how much oxygen is being produced and how that would change depending on different conditions. Man, it's really going there. So talking about our levels of our ecosystem, we've got the water plant that is a producer. It's producing oxygen, but really in, in terms of energy in the ecosystem, it's producing glucose, which is the first level of food, right? We also have some algae that's in there. The algae is also a producer. Anything that makes its own food is a producer. The snail, is eating some of that algae, so it's a consumer. The snail is probably eating some of the decomposing matter, so it's also a recycler, it's a decomposer, so it's helping to recycle some of those dead nutrient, those nutrients from the dead and, and decaying matter. We've got some bacteria in there that are also decomposers. We've got the shrimp that's in there, that's eating some microorganisms, like some maybe some bacteria, some other uh, algae that are in there. This ecosystem is seeking balance. It's trying to find that happy place where it's got everything that it needs, and whenever something dies, it's being decomposed and being recycled. Now, it's fairly stable, considering I've had this for a month and a half, and it's still going strong with really very little interaction from me. Today, I took, took out a stem of the water plant that had died, but it was still, still living, still producing. Most of it's still really healthy. And then that shrimp, I wanna know who that shrimp is. All right, guys, give me some ideas on what type of experiment we can do. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.